Hey guys, welcome back. This is JJ. So today I have something different to show you guys. Normally I would be reviewing the 1 to 18 scaled um, model cars or, or similar, but today I have this uh, Tamiya kit. It is a plastic kit and the superbike is a 1 to 12 scale Ducati 1199 Panigale S. Um, I have actually built quite a few of this sort of um, 1 to 12 scale Tamiya superbike before but back then I didn't have the experience and I also didn't have the right tools and equipment so the the model kit was pretty much just snapped together pretty quickly with the minimal of coloring um, in order to get the the model finished and fully assembled so now with some experience on customizing my 1 to 18 scale model cars i thought i will um, give it a go on the tamiya kit again um, i do like the tamiya um, assembly kit a lot because they are very nicely done um, very detailed and you know it all depends on how patient you are and you know what equipment and tools you have so the finishing result may vary between the, the end user so um, I picked up this Tamiya kit from um, Amazon uh, I paid about something in between 35 to 36 British pound uh, you might be able to find it cheaper somewhere um, like the model shop or eBay but I just thought, you know, I, I quite like the fast delivery by Amazon, so I bought it from them. Uh, so let's take a look at the um, packaging of the Tamiya kit. So on the front, you will see a really nice photo of the Ducati 1199 Panigale S. Big name right up at the top. This is a 1 to 12 scaled model. Um, it has a monocoque frame and L-twin two-cylinder engine. Uh, the side cowls can be removed after assembly. So I think the, the side cowls on both sides are being held by a couple of screws. So you could remove the screws and unveil the, the engine bay or the engine block. Um, the rear damper is fitted with metal coil spring, which is that. So you do have working rear suspension and it also come with the racing stand so it is just a um, kind of L-shaped um, frame in order for you to display your superbike standing upright. What else? Um, obviously it's by Tamiya so the kit is made in Japan. A bit of disclaimer there. Um, the kit is ready to assemble precision model kit the model may vary from image on the box detail scale model for hobbyist age 14 and above this is not a toy and you also have to get your own paint and cement so um, what I will do now I will um, obviously show you the, the contents um, what's inside the box so you you know what to expect uh, when the kits arrive and then you can work out you know what sort of tools and coloring and stuff that you will need in order to complete the kit um, so um, let's carry on with the uh, external packaging so on the underside you will see there are some nice drawing of the bike so this is basically to give you an idea of how to color um, your model bike but obviously um, it probably is better and easier if you just go on Google image search and look for the bike and then there will be tons and tons of images um, online from different angles of the bike as well as well as it probably have photo that really zoom in to the details so you can paint the, the bike very very accurately so for my project, um, I have already looked up um, a website um, whereby I can get a lot of 
coloring information of the actual bike. So, for example, as you can see on my screen, um, I will be painting my model superbike based on this model. Uh, one thing I've noticed straight away is on the kit itself, the, the bike comes with black brake lever and on this one is actually showing gold and also on the side cowl um, is actually showing Ducati cores on this bike and on this it doesn't so I guess I will be sticking to that because I won't have the water transfer to make it look like that but it's very useful to have this website so I can keep going through the photos to know exactly what color to put where basically and so these are just the f photos of the overall bike just the exterior and then as I move along you will see there are more and more photos which shows the very fine details from the headlight from the suspensions as well as the exhaust and engine block as well which I will scroll through really quickly um, I mean obviously the instruction menu you, will, you will already have the guide to show you what color to put on to the plastic kit but if you would like to kind of follow a, a real a sample of the superbike then you know Google image might help you a lot on that so as you can see, you can see the very fine details around the upside down um, fork, the brake system, as well as the, the brake disc and rotor and the rear wheel as well. It's, it's all very detailed. So it all depends on how patient you are. You can also color the, the canister um, in front of the handlebar as well. And check this out. This has gold brick caliper. It looks really nice. And also, um, my plan with the model bike is I don't think I will put on the side um, mirror and indicator. And I would also avoid installing the rear number plate so it looks more like a track ready uh, racing bike rather than a uh, road going bike so moving on um, there you go that's more photo and better details on the actual brake lever mechanism the speedo And I'll just quickly go through to the engine block just so you guys can have a quick look. That's the tail end of the bike, the fuel can. There's a lot of photo about this bike. So here we go you will start to see the photos for the engine block so this will really help me um, when I comes to you know adding the color to the model kit and the exhaust as well it's all very very detailed so anyway let's come back to the kit um, so moving on to the right hand side, um, that's another photo of the actual bike. And then on the top side, you will see a black or matte gray color, um, painting of the bike. So this is just to give you the, um, rough idea if you want to paint your bike in a different color. So the Ducati 1199. Panigale S comes with two color, the red as well as the matte black and I believe there is also a Senna version which is also matte black as well 
So if you want to go for the matte black uh, color scheme, so you can either follow this lovely drawing or you can go online on Google. I'm sure you will find those pictures. And then there is another photo of the full size motorcycle with the side cows and the front fairing. And I think the, the seat covers, everything's been removed. So you can see all the details inside. So this might help you um, when you colored the engine block. And this is a Ducati official licensed product. And there is a nice monogram stickers at the bottom as well. So let's take a look of the inside, shall we? So straight away, you can see the kit comes with the fairly basic color scheme. So let's go through them. You have the clear parts, so mainly the, rin the windshield, some of the indicators, the headlamp, or the headlamp cluster, the rear brake light, and I believe these are the small wheels for the uh, bike stand. So it comes with the clear parts. Obviously it comes with the rubber tires. So you can see there is uh, the front tire and the thicker rear tire as well. And the usual Tamiya screwdriver. I must have like four or five of them from the previous kit. Um, there are some flexi hosts as well and some joints or washes as well as some different size and length of screws so the the main body so as you can see the the fuel tank the side cows that is the, the rear bike stand I was referring to earlier. So I will have to airbrush them in like a red color. Originally I did think of maybe spraying it to the bright yellow color. But then I thought no, I better just stick to the original. So for this project, the bike is going to have to bright red color when I finish it. So you have the white body kit and then the engine block, the exhaust, the front fork, radiators, some of her engine block covers, the rear suspension, the chain, brake disc, more brake rotors and stuff. They're all in a grey colour moulding. So I will be either airbrushing them or paint brushing them. And then the the wheels, some other engine block cover and the the main frame of the superbike and the seats they are all in black color molded plastic there's your handlebar and the brake lever all in black and then you have some things that's been stapled to the side of the box so this is the front fairing which is also in white. It's pretty cool. So basically the kit comes in three colors. That's white, 
And that's black, it's gray, and white, white again. Just the three colors. Um, and then you have the, the clear windshield and headlamps plus the and the tires and screws and that's all the parts you will need to put the bike together and then what's this this is uh, that's the reflective sticker for the side mirrors I probably won't be needing those because I have no intention to install the side mirrors or the indicator and then on the underside you have the water transfers so from watching other YouTube video before I purchased this kit I believe the on the water transfer it basically gives you the two options of stickers it depends on whether you would like to put your or you would like to build your bike based on the the red version or the black version I believe I think they are slightly different so you have to pick the water transfer carefully before applying onto the the front fairing or the side cowls so they're all there and then you have the Tamiya tech tips so these are all the tools that you will need in order to put the kit together properly and then it also show you some techniques so basically just to Cut the, the parts out from the molding and then cut out the excess bit, file it down, make everything smooth before applying colours as you will. And then that's just showing you how to remove the excess plastic as well as adding the extra holes with the drilling tools. And this is to show you you know what type of glues that you will require rather than having the big brush you could also get the the more precision um, outlet of the of the glue so you won't have a lot of glue stain everywhere and then on the other side test fitting so basically just to show you when you cut out a piece of um, parts trim it and then try to fit it onto the the model without any glue to make sure it fits and then you apply the screw after and that is just for any um, metal plated part obviously in order to have the backing stick to the model properly you need to file it down to create some rough service before you apply the glue otherwise it might not stick or it might fall off after a little while and then that's just some techniques on um, using a spray can or airbrushing and you can also use the paint brushing technique as well for the finer details and that's about it and then you have background information on the 1199 Panigale S it's all written in Japanese and on the other side there's other languages as well so the English is right at the top so if you want to read it you can pause the screen and have a read and it's blank on the other side and then this will be the instruction or the assembly menu so right at the front it tells you what paint 
is required so you have got all the Tamiya code for different colors of paint they're all written in multi languages so it's easy to follow so if you go to the shop or online you just need to follow the code and you will know you're getting the right color um, I do know X7 and X8 they are the bright red and bright yellow color from the top of my head so all the information are there so just to let you guys know X is normally the gloss color and XF is the matte color finish recommend recommended tools as you can see you need some glue or they call it cement you need the side cutters scissors screwdrivers tweezers the modeling knife etc i will show you um, the kit that i have um, after this um, unboxing video so you will know what kind of um, tools and equipment i have in order to put this kit together as my project so here straight away on page one um, you can also get the options to buy the upgrade parts so this is mainly the the front fork and I believe the actual fork is made out of um, aluminum so basically it's a metal part and then you also have some other washers to make the front suspension system more realistic rather than having the, the plastic kit and then you paint it over. You, you will be able to find this um, upgrade detailing parts on Amazon or eBay. I've seen them before. They are around £30, which seems quite a lot. Consider I only paid £35, £36 for the kit. And then you have to pay for another thirty pound to get the upgrading upgrading parts, which seems quite a lot. But some people might think it's worth it. But as my project, I probably will leave it out. Maybe on my second or third motorbike, I might invest more in making it more realistic. And then basically, this is just the instruction manual. Um, they're all very clear, very detailed. It tells you the parts number so you know which um, plastic molding from the kit to cut out from. Um, it also has the recommendation of the colouring on all the parts. And it also shows you when and where you will need to apply the water transfers. So and there are pages and pages and pages of instructions that you can follow and then the last page is basically showing you where to apply the the decals or the water transfers and then this is just for ordering spare parts in case you have something missing or or you have broken something but i think this only applied if you lived in japan And then at the bottom of the box, there is also some printing. Uh, important information concerning this kit. So basically just to ask you to um, read carefully and fully understand the manufacturer's instruction book. Uh, you need to be care um, to prevent personal injury, keep out the reach of the children, metal parts of the motor or battery terminals included in this kit could have sharp points or edges. I don't think it applied to this kit. Grease or lubricant if applied with this kit must not be inhaled or taken internally, keep away from eyes. I don't think that applied either, but you do have to pack. be careful when you're using the cement or the glue, as well as using the the paint as well make sure you don't inhale the uh, the paint it's not good for you so stuff like that 
and then it's blank at the bottom. So that's everything that you will find inside your Tamiya kit. So I'll just put everything back into the box because I'm not starting with my project at this moment as I still have a lot of other stuff ongoing so I will be sure to find time and I'll probably do some short video um, basically to show the journey of building this Ducati bike. So here we are, that's the unboxing and a quick walkthrough of the actual contents. So now let me show you the tools that I will be using. Um, it might not be the full list of everything you need, but uh, from top of my head right now, um, these will be the, the tools that I'll be using. So uh, I'll be back in a few seconds and I'll get everything ready on the table to show you guys. Okay, so let me show you the tools that I will be using um, for the bike build. So first of all, you need to get yourself a set of the paint brushes. So the I will mainly be using the super fine ones for the detailing of the engine block as well as the front handlebar. They're quite cheap to pick up from the Art and Craft shops. And I bought this for £11.50. So for the kit, you probably have seen this kind of things before if you have ever built Gundam. So these are the um, model liner. So it's basically to highlight the joints as well as, you know, the indentations, um, stuff like that, the panel lines. So you just use the pen with a very fine tips. You just follow those um, kind of engraved lines to get the details. Or there's an easier option is to get the Tamiya um, detailing kit, which is like a very um, diluted solution. Uh, you can get them in different colors. Um, but from my research, I've only mainly seen the gray color, brown color and black. And I've actually um, just ordered the, the black detailer. Um, in a glass bottle yesterday, so hopefully it will turn up to my door at some point this week. But for now, I have these one from when I was building my Gundam model. So there are two black ones and two grey ones right here. So you don't need to buy these, but I would definitely recommend the Tamiya um, detailing um, liquid it just makes your life a lot easier using the the panel liners it will take quite a long time and then i have also picked up these ones from corerc.com i had these from when i was kind of playing and modifying with my uh, remote control crawlers so these are weight and you can stick them inside the, the truck or wherever is you want to add weight. But I bought these again because, um, as you know, the Tamiya kit is made out of plastic. There's no metal parts, so the finished bike will be quite light. And I have noticed on the instruction sheets. Um, I think inside the um, main engine block as well as the fuel tank there are enough space for me to add the smaller weight in it so just to make the bike feel a little bit heavier rather than just lifting a piece of 
plastic kit. So that's just my personal preference. You don't need to do that, of course. And then what do we have? Um, I have this little train, mainly for adding water to do my water transfer. Even have a Burago water transfer sticker on it. So this is quite handy. And this, I just use it every now and then when I was applying the water transfer. It's just to give me a smooth service rather than doing it on the table or on my um, art and craft mat. And then we have the cutter. So this will help you to cut out all of the parts on the plastic molding kit. This is very helpful. This is like my third one already. I think I lost one and then the other one is just in the other room. Rubber band is always handy to have. Pristick and normal glue. You never know, you, you might need them um, for, I don't know, some of my um, Burago model or Burago kit. The stickers, they do peel after a long while and I normally use this to stick them back and it's good to have. But you might not need this for the Tamiya kit. And then I have just a selection of double-sided tapes. They always comes in handy, especially when when it comes to airbrushing. You can always use the alligator clip, but you can also use double-sided pad or double-sided tape as well. And then it's just a tray for me to hold all the parts together so I don't lose them. Nail varnish. It's always good to have to protect your um, any fine details that you you painted on. For example, like the side indicator, or even some very fine decal. You could use this, um, but if you want to do it in the professional way, you could always um, spray a layer of clear coat. Um, I have also ordered that um, online, and it is a Tamiya clear coat so it's just a a clear lacquer that you spray on top of the um, acrylic paint to give it the glossy finish and also to protect the paint as well as to protect the water transfer stickers and then these are the colors that I will need for both airbrushing and paint brushing to get the bike finished mainly needs the red for the body the yellow would be for the suspension coil because i've noticed the coil is black the blue i think is mainly for the handlebar and maybe the exhaust pipe just to give it the the burnt effect and then the flat platinum and chrome silver are mainly for the exhaust and the engine block um, gold leaf color is for the engine block cover and then i have flat black so this would be on the i guess it's like the the mud guard and some of the suspension area i'll be using flat black and then i also have gloss black see the difference gloss is x1 flat or matte is xf1 and you also need the thinner So this, sorry, not the thinner, this is extra thin cement. So to 
stick the kit together, you will need them. And this one comes with a very, very fine brush, as you can see through the glass. So it gives you the precision on exactly where to apply the cement with the thinner that I mentioned. This is the one, Tamiya X20A. So you will need this to kind of dilute your acrylic paint on both paint brushing as well as air brushing. So you need to mix this with the acrylic paint before you pour it into your airbrush for the application. And then this kit I picked it up from Amazon. It's like a modeling kit. I'm not sure if the label would help. So this is for Gundam repairing and fixing. So basically inside this kit, there's a bunch of stuff. So there is a very fine file for finishing and the, on the other side, is to give it a polish finish. You have the polishing cloth. Another thing that worth getting is the Tamiya um, polishing compound. Uh, you'll be able to find that on eBay and Amazon as well. They, they're about £20. And then you have the, the tweezers that you will need for handling the small parts as well as when applying the water transfer stickers you need some sort of knife to cut out the the plastic parts or you use the the cutter I, I normally prefer this it's so much easier there is also a craft knife or cutter so when you cut out the, the parts from the plastic molding, you use this knife to remove any excess plastic to give it a smooth finish before you sand it down. And then there's another file just to give you the, the better finish. What else is there? There's other type of files as well. But I won't be using this because I already have a set separate, which is this one that I've used so many times and they are so good. And I think I picked this up from um, one of the hardware tool shop screw fix, I believe. I can't remember how much I paid, but they're not that expensive and they are very good to have. And then you also have, what is this? This is a metal ruler. I already got a couple of the plastic ones on my desk, so I won't be needing that. And then you have some replacement blade for this knife and this is a battery powered file so what you need to do is to prop one of these at the top and then this thing is powered by two AA batteries. And let me show you. So I just need to prop that in. And maybe the batteries run out, but this will spin and then you can use that to polish out any excess on the plastic part 
and you can always swap it to like a softer head and that will help you to polish certain um, small areas but ideally I would recommend the Tamiya polishing compound to give you a better result for sure what's else um, it's always good to have a craft knife be very careful they're very sharp and you will probably find it useful to have some masking tape you can get the Tamiya one they are they come with like a light yellow color and they are finer but you can also get the the one from the hardware store so I got mine from Halfords they are the masking tape and I could just cut them out to different th thickness as I go along so let me put this aside and I'll show you one of the main tool that you will need in order to get your model kit done nicely so instead of using paintbrush by hand to paint all the panels you get a more even and better finish with a airbrush there are some professional airbrush out there that could be quite expensive but as a um, hobby to build model kit one of these is more than enough this is actually my second one um, the first one is starting to give me um, issues so I just decided to just pick up another one it's exactly the same I've been using this for a while I like it and I can strongly recommend it so if you want to note down the name you will find this still in production you can buy this from Amazon or your local hobby store if you have one near you and it is manufactured in Hong Kong made in China and then there is a EU and UK importer that you could refer to so this kit has three pressure choices auto start and stop function and large capacity battery I picked this because you can either have the plug plugged into the wall so it just run non-stop or it has a built-in battery that you could carry it around maybe do some airbrushing in your shed or back garden when the wind is not too strong so it's quite good to have a mobile device with you and they are not too expensive I think they are about 75 to 80 pound depends on where you where you find them you might be able to find it cheaper somewhere else but I bought this recently for about 80 pound so let me just show you guys quickly what it looks like inside the kit itself is just that is sorry it's not very big like my hand is right there so the actual machine or the compressor is relatively small I'll put a pen next to it it's no longer than the pen it's like a square box and it's it's not that heavy you can feel the weight but it's easier enough to carry it around and then you have the flexi hose and the, the caps to hold the airbrush when you're not using it you've got the adapter and this box set basically you have the actual um, airbrush itself which is this um, bit of advice in order to have your airbrush 
um, working properly and last longer make sure you clean it thoroughly after each time you use it so that the paint doesn't get clogged in between you need to wash the and clean out the inside pin as well as you need to relubricate the, the pin as well so I'm sure you guys will be fine it's fairly straightforward um, to use even if it's the first time you're using um, airbrushing I'm sure you'll have no issue with that so I think that is all for now um, I hope you guys find this video um, interesting and useful uh, if you guys have any questions then feel free to reach out um, I will be starting this project hopefully soon um, I will for sure be posting some photos or short clips um, as I make progress with this project and I'm sure you guys um, will be notified if you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell um, if you like the video don't forget to give me a like um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do um, I have a lot more um, models as well as scale model cars that I would like to show you guys and to share my collection so for now take care and I will see you in my next video bye guys